Dan it, 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 Dan it. I like that. It's gonna be my new theme song. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Batman. Never have I ever season four. Man, this has been a ride. We've been through a lot with this crazy group of kids, and it's only right that we come full circle to one of the main goals set from the very beginning. Davy getting her chocolate chips dipped. Now, as a young woman, I'm sure Davy has had in mind how she wanted things to go down her first time around, but telling her to hit the hay and I'll call you an Uber? Last thing on her first time list, I'm certain. It was really awkward. I would say that them being friends, maybe this should have gone a little smoother because they know each other and to say the right things at this moment, but Davy and Ben also have a proven track record of miscommunication, so I'm not at all surprised. And of all people in the world to talk about this with, Ben runs into Dwight Howard. I, I don't get the correlation. Other than him being rich and his dad knowing famous people, why is Dwight Howard here? If anything, let's get Andy Samberg. At least he's done the narration for his episodes. There's some type of connection. But anyway, Davy, of course, tells Fab and Elle all about the details, and they come to the conclusion that Davy should just reach out to Ben. Davy, like anyone else in her predicament, didn't know what to say. So she decided to WWKSD it. What would Kristen Stewart do? Because if you don't want people to feel what your true emotions are, Kristen Stewart is the clear go-to. Ben, of course, reads too much into it, and with the guidance of Mr. Howard, they go the whole summer without talking to each other. In the meantime, Paxton Hall Yoshida is adjusting to his new life in college. If we think back, we'd remember that originally he had only planned to go on a swim scholarship, but then Davy hit him with the car and that led to him having to actually use his brain for once, and what do you know? He makes it to college. Only problem is, he's a total lame. I like that they went there with him because it's always the popular kids in high school who feel like life is just gonna be smooth selling and everything's gonna happen when, where, and how they want. Well, newsflash, buddy, it's not. Life doesn't work that way. You're no better than the rest of us. Okay, that was a bit much. That's not like I'm taking it personally. <sighs> Let's pretend that didn't happen. Moving on. Paxton is no longer the big guy on campus. No one cares how good you look or that you had girls fawning all over you left and right. At ASU, you're just a freshman. Get over yourself. His BFF Trent is in a similar situation, but on the opposite end of the spectrum. Being that he is a senior for the second year in a row, he realizes that he's kind of stuck. He's feeling out of place. No growth. Personally, romantically, academically, everything is so... Ugh. Academically is where Davy seems to get it right in her life no matter what. Well, most of the time. The irony that she's so smart yet senseless has been quite hilarious, actually. But Davy has been wanting to go to Princeton, right? Something that she's worked her entire life toward. One of her tactics is to have Dr. Keys write her a recommendation because she's the best at it. She only does a couple of year. Davy spent the whole day sucking up to this very conservative lady who believes the opposite sex should not touch unless they plan to tie the knot. You shouldn't eat with your elbows on the table and ladies should sit with their legs crossed at the knees. Varicose veins be damned. Okay, I just made all of that up, but that's the vibe she gives. Davy puts on the show for this woman all day only to throw it down the toilet by blurting out details about Ben's um, his baguette. Now, sure, finding out the guy you had such an intimate moment with not too long ago has a girlfriend is quite devastating, but when Davy gets hurt, she doesn't care who's around. She expresses whatever she feels in that instant, a blessing and a curse. Of course, this warrants a visit to Dr. Ryan, and I love that Dr. Ryan finds Davy slightly annoying and crazy, but loves her nonetheless. She tells her she needs to write things in her journal to express it, and before it even happened, I said to myself, watch, Margot is gonna find the journal. And what do you know? Margot 
seeds that Davy wrote about her. I'm glad they didn't build a whole friendship and then five episodes later she sees it. It didn't need to be dragged out. I hate you, you hate me, the end. And after this, Ben apologizes to her about the whole hit it and quit it thing. It was his first trip to the bakery himself. But beyond that, he knew that Davy wasn't the right one for him. They were always competing and he needed someone to put him at ease. And I want to say good for Ben. Knowing what you need in a partner and standing by it is tough. A lot of us make excuses for the ones we like or love just because that longing to have them is greater than what the reality of having them actually is. Good for you, Ben. This moment is met with Davy seeing a very special message spray painted on the side of her car. Who would do such a thing? None other than Margaret. Or wait, what's her name? <laughs> Oh, see. <laughs> Whew, okay. <laughs> None other than Marco. <laughs> At least that's what Davy thinks. And I can't blame her. First, you take my man. Then you get mad because I'm mad at you. Makes perfect sense. Nalani goes up to the school to get to the bottom of it. And the shade that was thrown when she found out the girls were at it because of Ben was hilarious. Like, why would you do Ben like that? He is not that much of a lame. Okay, maybe he is. No, but there was something I noticed that I can appreciate about this moment. Though Nalani and Davy have come a long way in their relationship and they are closer, they did not divulge Davy's love life at this moment. They could have had this big talk about why she should have waited and marriage and diseases and all that stuff I'm sure Nalani would have brought up. Instead, they let Davy have that information and it didn't go there. I like that. Now while Davy tells Ben that she thinks Margot spray painted the car, my mind for some reason came up with a conspiracy. This car previously belonged to her mother who not too long ago was out there getting her swerve on with Common. I don't remember his name on the show, but I don't care to look it up because he plays the same character every time I see him. So anyways, what if this message was from one of his girls thinking that this was Nalini's car? Now that would have been some tea. Unfortunately, we did not get that extra layer of drama, which brings me to Ethan. Supposedly he's been at the school, but he wasn't a looker and he had a glow up over the summer. I personally never witnessed somebody just glow up over the summer. Like if you wasn't cute before you left the school, then three months later, you still not gonna be cute, but that's just me. But we will go with it for the sake of introducing his character. Ethan has blossomed and Elle has her eye on him. Davy has her eye on his handwriting. His writing matches the writing on the car. Up to this point, she was convinced that Margot had done it and because of that, Ben iced her out. He told her to talk to the hand because the face don't want to hear it. Well, not exactly, but he wanted to. In the wake of this dismantled friendship, Crazy Davy makes an appearance, basically threatening Ethan to pay for her damage to her car. Crazy Davy is a lot, but at this moment, I'm riding with her. You destroyed my car and made me lose my man. You gonna pay for that, literally. But because this is Davy we're talking about, it doesn't take long for her to start liking Ethan, and Ethan isn't used to women having self-respect on any level, so he's gay. Now, a couple of interesting things happen in the midst of all of this. Elle gets proposed to by Trent. Thank God she said no because boy bye. You are not about to trap me. Normala has a secret white boyfriend, which is hilarious in itself, but she feels guilty because she's a widow and everybody's like, girl, it's okay. Go ahead and get your back cracked. I'm out of town. Thugging with my rounds. <laughs> And Paxton appears out of nowhere for a job interview. I was wondering how they were gonna tie him in. Turns out because college didn't work so well for him, he applied to be the assistant swim coach. When all else fails, go back to what you know. As the saying goes, college is not for everybody, it's not. Slowly but surely, the world is beginning to accept that. Just let people's journey flow through life. Leave the expectations alone. I'm not mad at him 
for making that decision for himself but he started to regret it all because of these little dweebs at the school now on one hand if a quote unquote popular guy went off to college and days later came back to the school as an assistant swim coach i would look at them confused i can see there being a big discussion about it amongst the student body but the extent that these kids went making fun of him where's the compassion it's hard out here you never know what people are going through and why he ended up back however comma on the flip side i don't know what the history is between them and paxton they may be well within their rights to clown him moving on davy and her men first of all we find out that it was ben's idea to ice davy out which no surprise there he tends to put up boundaries with her so whatever but the real gag is this whole the boy is mine situation between Davy, Ethan, and Elle. Davy claims to have intentions of setting Elle up with Ethan as if this is the second coming of Paxton and you expect us to believe you let it go. So after lying to herself about that, they all engage in a kiss. Well, not like that, separately, but equal. It's awkward and a little hurtful for the girls, but ultimately, Elle gives up her spot and Davy wants to exclusively date Ethan. Two things I want to say. For one, I think it's interesting that Elle backed off. Of course, she still had feelings for Trent, but she also has this thing for bad boys. And Davy clearly doesn't have a type. She likes what she likes at the moment but surprisingly i'm not mad at this i thought i was gonna be irritated with them bringing in another love interest but i think she needs to, she needs to do like everybody else and get involved with some good for nothing to recognize her real worth which brings me to davy being out of town thugging with her rounds hey. <laughs> but listen they baked cookies but these cookies were a different flavor if you will she liked this flavor much better than the one she had with ben and now she's sprung she's looking past all his flaws because he puts it down the way she needs him to of course everybody's like girl he is not the one and she doesn't care now i feel like most people have been there where the person may not be all that great but it's one thing that keeps them attached i understand and i have to say i appreciate the fact that they didn't take this overboard like I know a lot of people get up in arms about teens doing the thing in shows as if it doesn't happen in real life regardless. Where I draw the line is where they show everything. That's why I still haven't watched Euphoria. I don't care if these people are 40. I don't want to see teens doing nothing. Nevertheless, this whole bad boy thing comes to a crashing halt anyway, and it all stems from Davy trying to play her Indian card. There's an Indian woman doing the recruiting for Princeton and Davy approaches her with I'm like you we're the same type of energy and the lady was not impressed Davy went on to put her foot in her mouth even further and to avenge her her bakery buddy decides to steal the lady's wallet that's when she finally snaps out of it out of the hypnosis and kicks him to the curb originally upon meeting Ethan I wanted him to be a real potential match for Davy not necessarily the one she ends up with but the potential you know but now that I think about it he served his purpose she got what she needed from that encounter and hopefully some of her good qualities rub off on him no need to drag it out longer than it needs to be speaking of her good qualities davy did the most undavy thing by giving her shirt to ben when he was in crisis and it actually saved him with the columbia rep now this moment made me have a change of heart or a shift in mindset if you will something that i didn't see coming up till now i've been an avid supporter of daxton but now i'm leaning towards benvy davy giving her shirt to ben was a huge eye opener do you know how much you have to love and care about someone to not only wholeheartedly wish them well but to help them on their journey when you're not even on speaking terms like there's nothing at this point that suggests that they will be together or even friends and she's completely selfless in his time of need because she knew how important it was to him they've had other moments before both ben and davy but this one hit a little different i really felt this one i th i think i'm team ben i think like i think that's i'm there with it i'm having a <laughs> epiphany right now i'm team ben wow 
Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> somewhere in there, Paxton tries to put one of his old flunkies in check, making him look even more like a loser. Like, forget the fact that he already graduated high school and this stuff should be beneath him. He's a staff member now. Get out your feelings and grow up. And his new friend wasn't feeling it either, and I don't blame her. Major turn off. Speaking of friends not feeling it, here's where we get into Fab and Crazy Davy with this whole... Princeton debacle. While Davy was warding off her latest doughboy, Fabiola was unwillingly on purpose applying for Davy's dream school. Under any other circumstance, that would have not been such a big deal, but one Ivy League school plus two minorities equals chances slim to none. So on one hand, I get why they would have a pact amongst each other that only one would apply, but on the other, Fab has to look out for number one. So it is what it is. And again, under any normal circumstance, Fab could go to her friend and say, this is why I'm applying because of X, Y, Z, and the friend would be understanding. But this is crazy Davy, so there is no rationale. Fab does what anybody else would do in this situation and just refuses to tell her. Life isn't going as planned for anyone else either with these pre-college experiences. Elle sucks as an actress. Well, not exactly, but she feels that way. Her audition for school didn't go so well. Somewhere in there, she was compared to Flo from Progressive. And I can't even lie, she does give Flo from Progressive energy. But I know Flo is paid. How long has she been on those commercials? She needs to be paid. So if that's your highest potential, get it how you live. Ben's doing the Ben thing when he tries to have a nerd off with someone who is potentially smarter than him. Only in this case, it's not coming so naturally. This is an interesting sight to see because just like with Paxton, he just knew he was gonna be the pick of the litter. He found his tribe, but baby, you are at the bottom. Even though these people were super annoying. So if I were Ben, I wouldn't even be mad at it if I didn't fit in. F y'all. Another interesting thing to see was Davy and her old senior buddy, Blair. Blair put on this whole facade of her lit college life and the girl was on her Kanye West. Wait no, Kanye was a college dropout. Blair just straight up flunked and didn't even have the decency to tell Davy until she got busted as a bartender working at the school. I mean I get being embarrassed but the whole point is for you to let her know how it really is. So now Davy and Ben are bummed about going to college. And after he protects his true love from getting felt up in the club, they have a moment of confiding in each other about their fears. Ben assures her that she's nothing like Blair. Her experience won't be the same. And she assures him that he's just like those kids and he will fit right in. And thus, the rekindling of the flame. Now, somewhere in here, Davy calls Paxton to apologize about being so hard on him about dropping out, and he said that they should hang out when she gets back. This here was the nail in the coffin for any revival of Davy and Paxton. Old Davy definitely would have obsessed over that. Like, spending time with Paxton, this is gonna be great. She would go into the whole scenario of how it would be. Instead, she was just like, Right, cool but the energy felt like yeah we can do that whatever like excuse me you used to be crazy about him my girl is over it speaking of being over it it is early decision day and everything is bound to implode davy is on edge taking everything personal snapping at anybody who even breathes in her direction and for good reason she's deferred what happens to a dream deferred does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? <laughs> I always think about that when I hear the word deferred. Anyway, Fab gets accepted. And I thought it was so sweet that Elle was so supportive of her, even though she was sad for Davy. That's a real friend. But now Davy is more determined than ever to get into Princeton and she sets out to become a more well-rounded student by becoming an equipment manager. Davy, please. Even Paxton was like, girl this ain't gonna help you <laughs> but it made her feel like she was doing something so whatever while tending to her managerial duties she stumbles across her backstabbing friend and again i don't blame fab for not telling her even though of course this now causes an issue but i do feel kind of bad for her with 
the overall circumstances. Her best friend is mad at her and her mom is being a mom, pressuring her to go because it's the best for her field, but she doesn't even want to go to this school, so it's like all of this commotion is for nothing. In the meantime, Kamala is convinced that Lynn is a sugar baby, and that's the only reason why he's even remotely interested in grandma. I mean, the signs do point to it. Younger guy, older woman, presumably nothing in common. She's absolutely smitten, and it all happened so fast. But besides the signs being there, Kamala is doing nothing but using this as a distraction to not accept the life-changing job offer in another state. Just scared to leave her comfort zone that's all just go ahead and go girl it'll be the best thing you've ever done speaking of ben does the best thing for himself in this moment when he breaks up with margo he doesn't feel valued or appreciated by her and for good reason she epitomizes hello christ i'm about to sin again i said i love you to that man but i'm not feeling him <laughs> so i'm with ben kick her to the curb Paxton talks sense into Davy about being mad at Fab. They make up and Elle finally reveals a secret that she's been holding for the past few days. She's graduating in two days to become an unemployed actor. Well, she said pre-working. I guess optimism trumps reality. I've, I don't think I've ever heard of graduating just because you felt like it. Like, it'd be one thing if she had already been on track to graduate early because she took AP classes and surpassed her credits or something. No, this girl said, I want to be unemployed. Well, by golly, have at it. Now, I thought it was interesting that we also find out that Davy's goal of going to Princeton is tied to a memory with her fine daddy. A conversation she had at six years old. Now it makes sense why she wants it so bad. Like we knew that he encouraged her to go when she got a little older but not that that was a moment that they shared and with time she treated it as a pact. Something that exemplified their bond. I get it. Still think she should have gotten a whole episode of life if my dad was here and it could have been narrated by James Earl Jones. That grand fatherly voice. Instead, we get another episode of Gigi Hadid and Paxton. Y'all just trying to piss me off. I get it. Y'all want Darren Barnett to have more screen time. Side note, real quick, Anissa is an extra in this season too. I'm like, girl, they could have did better with you. And where's Rebecca? But anyways, where was I? Uh, Darren, more screen time. I get it. But why not just incorporate him in the storyline more? Y'all could have fired up the triangle again. See, now I want him back with Davey. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Well, yeah. The point is, this episode was unnecessary. We already know he struggled with balancing being a responsible staff member, but still being the teenager he is going out with his friends. I didn't need a whole episode of him teaching Neville how to swim. Neville no that's not his name what is his name his name is chris <laughs> neville girl okay yes it was nice to see him find inspiration to persevere in life the way that i almost said neville again chris did during swim lessons but that could have been done in five minutes of another episode. Get to the stuff we came to see. Like Paxton and Davy get stuck in a closet reminiscing about old times and talking to Davy about opening her bakery and making out. Would have been the perfect time for the triangle because around this time, Ben and Davy are back talking. Flirting even. But whatever. Nalani and Margot's dad start to get acquainted after their daughters start to fake liking each other very unselfish thing for Davy to do proud of her for that and it's funny because Eleanor had the same type of selfless moment with her mom being that she and her mom are both unemployed actors they're each hitting the circuit auditioning for any and every job they can land Eleanor runs into her on set and she can smell the desperation of a struggling actor that was a huge reality check for her not only for the life her mom had been living but that she didn't want to look up in the next 30 years and be in that same position a tragedy waiting to happen sort of like when ben got high and decided to race off to tell davy that he loves her not knowing that margot would be there i mean 
I commend him for going after what he wanted, though the timing was just off. Somewhere in there, we learned that the woman that Kamala thought Lynn was talking to is not his woman, and it's the realtor. He and Grandma are closing on a vacation home for the family. So there's that, no need to panic. Something that deserves panic? Davy got waitlisted, and she didn't get accepted into any other school, not even Harvard. What, like it's hard? Life is just not looking up. So Davy does the Davy thing and tells her mother that she got accepted into every school. Of course, this news spreads like wildfire and Davy just keeps it going, turning what should be a fun day into a not so fun one. It is her senior prom. Because Fab and Eleanor are her safe space, she confesses to them that she didn't have a clean sweep. She didn't get diddly squat. So everybody opens up. Elle has plans to be a director, to champion for the people, and Fab wants to go to Howard to be with her people. After such an exhausting talk, the girls decide to ditch prom, which I'm not mad at. We've already seen them at a dance. You see one, you've seen them all. But in the midst of Eleanor and Trent getting back together, which, uh, to that, like I know they're supposed to be that weird, quirky couple, but Trent just does not do it for me. They should have did an opposite attracts mate for L, but whatever. Ben hears about Davy not getting into any schools and goes over to encourage her not to give up. And I thought it was funny, he was struggling climbing into the window and Davy was like, Paxton did it all the time and it was a breeze. <laughs> then Nalini catches them in bed and doesn't even know it because <laughs> she thought he was a doll. Like, <laughs> oh Ben, you're such a loser. It's so funny. <laughs> but with the encouragement of her sweet Benny Benny Boo Boo, Davy writes her weightless essay, facing her fear of telling her truth about her dad, speaking the words that bring life to such a traumatic thing that happened. She sends it knowing that whether she gets into Princeton or not, it doesn't break the bond that she had with her dad, that no matter what, she'll always have him. I love that she finally found peace in that. But luckily for her, she actually gets into Princeton. So that's a win-win. But now it's settling in for the UN that they are all going their separate ways. Seeing each other and hanging out every day is a thing of the past and life will never be the same. It's time to grow up. Everyone is off to their own. Well, a little bit. I don't think we ever really grow up. We just evolve and evolution is not linear. I'm about to go off course. Let me focus. Nermalus wedding. <laughs> the last hurrah for the gang. A lot of emotions. People saying their goodbyes. Paxton and Davy, which I'm not going to lie. It had me in the feels for them to get back together again. I don't know. Maybe they just have good chemistry. Every time they have a conversation, I'm like, yes. But Davy says he was a good boyfriend, but even better friend. I disagree. They started off a little rocky, had to find their groove, but ultimately he was good to her. She just sabotaged it, but it doesn't even matter at this point. She says her goodbye to her mother. They are both dreading this change, but that's normal. They'll be okay. The gang plays a game of never have I ever, which was so freaking cute. And in the mist, Ben comes back to tell Davy he loves her. They bake cookies. This time, no Uber is involved and they decided to be together. Davy ends with prayer, not asking for anything, just saying thank you and to take care of her mom. Sean McEnroe, our resident narrator, says his goodbye for now. So even though this is a series finale, there could be another season in the future. I think it'd be interesting to see where they are in a couple of years. Am I satisfied how he left off? I am. I think the character arc for Davy has been great. She's evolved so much as a person, although she still has her flaws. Paxton, no longer the dumb jack gearing up to be a teacher amazing ben i feel he's at the least amount of growth but that's not necessarily a bad thing fabiola going after what she wants instead of letting her mother's expectations rule her life l doing as many of us do pivoting her career goals to accommodate her circumstances and true desires i've talked about nalini's growth in past videos um 
yeah i can't complain we'll accept about the love triangle being a total waste which i've said a million times it gave it was always you energy you want to be bella so bad what did y'all think of the final season were you satisfied was there something missing should anything have been added what were your favorite moments and would you be here for future stories with these characters i want to take a second to apologize again for such a long unintentional hiatus i feel like i'm apologizing like every third upload <laughs> <laughs> but every time I start a video, I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling this video or get another idea and start another video or life just throws out a curveball and I'm tending to that. And when I say the curveballs have been coming, they've been coming. So I have like four or five videos that are all halfway done. Um, yeah, I finished this one because I'm like, I know they would rather see Never Have I Ever rather than one of the random ones. You guys show up whenever I post a video, so I know it's not a big deal, but just wanted to say that anyway. I haven't forgotten about y'all. Trust me. I'd rather be doing full-time content creation. <laughs> I just suck with time management, so I don't know how long it's going to be for me to get to just full-time creation. If you guys have any time management tips, please let me know. I asked this on the podcast too, on my last upload. The podcast is linked below along with merchandise if you're interested. With all of that being said, if you haven't done so already, be sure to click like and hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. As always, I'm all ears. Until next time, Bye. Because the next scene is the first of two where Jack takes center stage to put Alice in her place and tell her to chill with all the questions and detective work and just enjoy life as they know it. These scenes caused a lot of conversation online and was a bullet point in the film critic world. People hated it. Here's clips of the audience audibly laughing while Harry is on screen. And there are many who say that one of the main reasons the movie was so lackluster was because of his performance. Here's what I have to say, and I'm going to be completely honest. Harry is not a bad actor. Is he a good actor? No. 